Hey guys, today we're having our last application of the uh, standard normal um, distribution. I just want to remind you what we've done so far with the normal distribution and the standard normal distribution. We've been dealing with normally distributed variables with a given mean and standard deviation. Now we've had that at all times. Now given the mean and standard deviation and a score, we've been able to figure out the probability. So we've been faced with things like this. Probably x is less than or equal to 43. Given the score, we've been able to figure out the probability. So we've done that. Given those two, we've done that. We've also done this. Given the mean and standard deviation and a probability, so given these two, we've found a score. So we've done things like this. Probably if x is less than or equal to k, is 0 0.6. So given the probability and the, me, uh, the mean and standard deviation, we've been able to find the score. The last thing we're going to do today, we've got three things here. The only thing we haven't actually done is given the probability and the score, how can we actually find oh, how can we actually find the mean and standard deviation? So that's what we're going to be having a look at today. All right, let's go over and have a look at what this might look like. All right, let's start with this. If we have a mean mu and a standard deviation uh, of a normally distributed variable, let's have a look at this. We actually have, in this case, we have both the score and we have the probability we want to actually find the mean and standard deviation. Well, just like all other situations, the first thing to do is look at what it looks like over on a normal distribution, or on our, uh, on our distribution. All right, we have a mean here, we have a standard deviation. We know that when x is, our score is greater than 25, the probability is 0.2. Now that's less than 0.5, so what does that mean about our score of 25? Is it on this side or this side? Well, it's got to be up here, doesn't it? So I know at 25 here, I know there's 20% 0.2, lots of scores lie greater than 25. Okay, so let's get back and have a look what some math looks like. Okay, at no stage at this point do we see any mean or standard deviation. So until we can see that somewhere, there's not a lot we can do. So think about where we have brought in the mean and standard deviation into to situations with the normal distribution. The only time that has happened is when we have used our standard normal distribution, where instead of having an x score, we have a z score. Okay, And remember, we can convert our x scores to our z scores by doing our score minus our mean over our standard deviation. Okay, so let's say we convert this x score to a z score. So we've got probability of z is greater than or equal to, to convert that to a z score, I'd have to have 25 minus mu over sigma equals 0 0.2. Okay, so now at least we've brought in our mean and standard deviation. But the other thing we need to think of, any time we've dealt with the normal distribution, we've needed to look at less than or equal to. So what you might want to do over here, if we have a look here, instead of looking at greater than or equal to 25, we might want to look at less than or equal to 25. Of course, we know we'll have 0.8 in there. So I'm just going to convert that now, I'm going to change it. Probability z is less than or equal to 25 minus mu over standard deviation is going to be 0 0.8. Okay, what can we do with this now? Well, we could use our inverse norm, couldn't we? Okay, so if I come over here, I could find inverse norm of this. In other words, I could find the z score in my z distribution here. This is my z distribution. I could find this z score here such that 80% of scores lie below it or 20% lie above it. So I can do, of course, my inverse norm. So if I do inverse norm 0 0.8, okay, so let's do that. Let me turn that on. So I go to distributions, 
inverse norm of 0.8, what have we got there? Ah, we have 0.8416, let me put that over there. Does that seem to make sense that this number should be 0.8416 blah 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 blah? Since the Z distribution has um, a mean of zero standard deviation of one, does that make sense? Yeah, because we have positive one, two, three standard deviations below. That's obviously just a little bit less than one standard deviation above our mean. Okay, so I'm going to write that. We've got 0 0.84166, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so where does that leave us? Let's just go down a little bit now. Okay, so now I could say, there goes the bell that my z-score here, which is 25 minus mu over standard deviation, our z-score value is 0 0.84166, blah, 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 blah. Now, I want you to have a look at this equation here. What do you notice? It is an equation with two unknowns. We can't do anything with that unless we have a second equation with those same two unknowns. So what we need to do is go back to our question. Our original situation was I gave you the information x is greater than um, or equal to 25. I said that was 0.2. You need to have a second piece of information. So my second piece of information for you is x is going to be less than or equal to 15. And we know there's 30% of scores less than or equal to 15. So if we draw this up here, let's have a look at what we've got now. We know we've got our mean. We know above here there is a score such that we've got 0.2 above there. Now, when x is less than or equal to 15, we know that we've got 30% of scores. So does that tell us that 15 is above the mean or below? That number's less than 0.5, so we know it's going to be below the mean here. So in here we are going to have 0.3. So we are going to do exactly the same thing with we, we did with our, our x distribution score of 25. We've got x is less than or equal to 15, 0.3. Oh, that's okay. Convert that to a z score. Less than or equal to 15 minus our mean over our standard deviation equals 0 0.3. We've already got it as less than or equal to, so that's kind of neat. And now we just do inverse norm again. Inverse norm, 0 0.3. So let's go and get that. Inverse norm of 0.3. And we get negative 0.5244. So I know now that 15 minus mu over standard deviation is negative 0 0.5244, etc. Does that make sense? Should this z score be negative over here? Well, yeah, because if this is a mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1, we are below the mean. It should be a negative z value. Okay, so now look at what we've got. We have one equation here with our mean and standard deviation. We have a second equation with our mean and standard deviation. The only thing we've got to do now is to solve those. So let's solve them. I'm just going to put the other one down here. We had 25 minus mu over sigma was equal to uh, 0 0.841. Six, six. Okay, so we're going to solve simultaneously. Now this is completely up to you how you want to do this. Okay, I see a single mu here, so I'm going to take my sigma up to both sides. So if I go up here, this equation is going to become 15 minus mu equals negative 0.5244. Uh, sigma. Notice I'm going to more than three significant figures so that my final answers when they are to three sig figs will be accurate to three sig figs. Okay, and let's do our red one. Just putting them in the same format. We've got 25 minus mu equals 0 0.84166.
When I do that, let's change colour here. I could use elimination here. Of course, you could make new subject and you could graph it and, and find the solution. Um, if I subtract both of these, I'll end up, I'm actually going to subtract this one from this one. I end up with um, 10. They will cancel out. 10 is equal to 1.3660 sigma. Solve that first sigma, we get sigma is equal to 7.3205. Now it's just a matter of putting that back in and finding our mean. So if I just go down a little bit further, substitute that back into one of our equations. Well, I've got 15 minus mu equals negative 3.83. So mu comes out to be 15 plus 3.83. Mu comes out to be approximately 18.8. And what was our standard deviation? Our standard deviation was 7.32 to 3 sig figs. Now, does that make sense? Think about that for a minute. If we drew these up again, to have one more look at it. Um, we had that 20% of scores were greater than 25. There was 0.2 there and 30% of scores I think were less than 15. We just got a mean of 18.8. Does that seem reasonable there? It needs to be between the 15 and 25. And a standard deviation of 7. We know that this is uh, you know, about one standard deviation to this side of the mean just with the probabilities that we were going. So they definitely seem reasonable. So this is the one time when actually converting to Z scores is actually needed. We need to bring in an equation where we have uh, mu and sigma and then we can solve simultaneously. But just remember that you need two bits of information, you need two probability bits of information about your normal distribution to be able to do it. Okay, I'd like you guys to have a go at this one and we'll talk about it when we get into class. Okay, we have x is normally distributed. So there we go, we have a normal distribution. This is what we know about it. <coughs> Let's say probability of x is less than or equal to 8, 0 0.1, and the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10 is 0 0.1. Six. Okay, using what we've done, using our Z scores, where we went and converted our X distribution to a Z distribution, which allowed us to bring in mu and sigma for these. We could then use inverse norm to find our Z values, and then it was a matter of solving simultaneously. So you guys do that one, and we'll have a look at it back in class. Have fun.